What you're looking at right here is the brand new flagship laptop from Samsung, the Galaxy Book 4 Ultra. And I'm a huge Samsung user. I use the Galaxy S24 Ultra as my everyday phone, the Galaxy Buds, the Galaxy Watch, like a lot of Samsung ecosystems. So when I saw this new laptop came out, I was really excited. But in this video, I wanna go through a lot of different tests and figure out who this laptop is really for. Is this going to be a laptop for students, for families, for uh, creators, for just everyday people running a business, like who would really be using this laptop? And there's a lot that I noticed from this laptop that I really, really like about it. And a couple things that I really don't like about it. Now, let's start off with the physical design here. Just kind of a quick rundown, a quick tour of this. This is a 16 inch laptop right here. It comes in a couple different colors. This is gray right here. It's a nice premium aluminum exterior. Uh, it does collect some fingerprints, not really that bad, but like looking at it in my studio right here, I'm definitely seeing some fingerprints. And what I really like is the logo on the left side. It's a little more understated, not a giant logo across the back. And being on the left side, I think is a little bit unique. Additionally, the logo, not to talk about that too much, it doesn't matter that much, but it looks cool. Like it has different colors. It kind of shines in, in, in the light in a cool way. I think it's pretty nice. It's a nice modern looking laptop. Looking at the ports on the side, this is obviously really important. The first thing I notice with any new laptop, on the left side we have HDMI, awesome. I'm gonna be using that a lot. We have two Thunderbolt type C ports right there, and I'm really happy that we have that, but this is our first drawback with this laptop. We don't have any on the right side. So you're gonna be charging with one of those ports, and the other one, presumably, you'll plug in maybe an adapter, maybe you'll plug it into another monitor, whatever you plug into, maybe even a hub, I guess. Um, but what I don't like is that you can't plug in on either side if you want to charge this in the in the like the outlets on your right side you have to run the cable like across your lap and plug in on the left side I, I just wish we had a more balanced charging option here on the right side we have a headphone jack we have a full size usb type a port which i'm actually really happy about uh, my macbook does not have that and it's something that i find that if you're plugging into like an old printer or maybe you have like a security key there's a lot of things that still use a traditional usb type a port so having one is pretty nice and then we have our micro sd card slot some people gave this a lot of heat for not having a full size i think it depends on what you're doing with this if you are a smaller creator and you're using like handheld maybe like action cameras you're going to be having micro sd anyway and it's nice to not require a an, an adapter with you all the time or if you're like a, a really large creator and, and you just mostly use drones and stuff like that again sometimes it's nice to have a micro sd slot there for me i use like a like a regular slr style camera and so i always have full-size sd cards I think it's a little bit of a drawback for me personally to have that, but most of my SD cards are, are like micros inside of a full-size SD anyway, so I really can't complain about that. Going into a one finger test here, if I just lift on the front, we are able to open the laptop, like a pretty nice smooth hinge there. It stays at basically any angle all the way down to, wow, probably only like a couple, more about probably four, three degrees right there maybe is when it starts to close okay so pretty solid hinge i really like that and opening it up it seems to go pretty far open as well this is not a 360 laptop but it is a touch screen now unlike last year's version and if we just do a quick typing test to see what the screen wobble looks like wow very very little if you shake the lot if you shake the desk I think they did a good job. For a laptop of this size with a 16 inch display, typically you see a lot of screen wobble. Many manufacturers really struggle with that. And so it's definitely there, but pretty minimal. I'm really happy with that. Looking at the keyboard then, it's a slightly different configuration than you might expect. So we do have the numpad on the right side. It's a little bit more compressed. So if you're somebody that types a lot of Excel sheets and you're really used to a full size numpad, it's gonna take a beat to really get used to this. but Personally, I like having that over there. I do use Excel sheets a lot. And so having a number pad, I think is a big advantage for a power laptop like this. But that does kind of shift our keyboard over to the left, obviously. And so it does, again, take a second to get used to this keyboard. Um, pretty nice tactile feel on them. A little bit of a shallow travel. Not my favorite keyboard, like a little bit stiffer on them. But again, once you get used to it, my typing speed was really quite fine with this laptop. I guess I haven't mentioned this. I've been using this laptop for about two weeks now, a week and a half, two weeks now. And I've been doing a lot with this. I've been using Adobe Premiere Pro on here. I have been obviously managing like emails and, and doing a lot of other things, um, editing like Insta360 videos, a lot of different stuff on here. And it really handles it all quite well. And I'm pretty used to the keyboard by now. The trackpad is a little bit left of center and it is very, very large. It's not a haptic trackpad. I think that's a drawback for a laptop of this price. 
which by the way, the price here uh, ranges from about $23.99 to $29.99 being made by Samsung. There's always a ton of deals and sales out there. And I will have affiliate links in the description below that at the very least can give you a pretty nice trade-in value on this laptop. Uh, so if you have any older laptop, I think you get up to about $700 trade-in credit. Um, so $2,300 or $2,400 on this laptop. Like that's no small, that's no pocket change. It's obviously a lot of money, um, but hopefully the trade-in could at least help you if you decide to buy this laptop. Now, with that being said, $3,000, you know, $2,300, $2,400, all the way up to $3,000, that puts us in a very competitive category. I really do expect a lot from this laptop. So far, like I said, there's a lot that I like about it physically, just a couple drawbacks that I think you should be aware of. Now, one last thing to mention from the keyboard aspect and the trackpad aspect, obviously, like I said, trackpad works well. I like it. Um, I wish it was haptic, but it's fine. Um, but it does have a fingerprint sensor on the top right. That's also your power button, of course. And so this uses the fingerprint sensor primarily when you're signing in for stuff, uh, as opposed to many other Windows laptops, which have Windows Hello based on the facial recognition. This does not have facial recognition on the top. Uh, so that kind of minimizes the bezel a little bit, but that kind of gets us into this, the display segment of this video. So starting off with the X, like around the display, obviously starting with the bezels, they are asymmetric. So left and right are very thin and that's very nice, but the top and bottom are definitely different. The top is a little bit wider than the sides, but narrower than the bottom. And you can see the camera is absolutely microscopic. Just a really, really tiny camera on here. We'll get into a camera test in a second to see how well that actually can perform considering how tiny that is. And of course we have a microphone to the right of that camera. But like I said, no infrared sensors, so we won't be getting face ID up there. Then the display. The display is probably the highlight of this laptop being made by Samsung. I think it's really no surprise. Samsung does a fantastic job with displays on all of their products. So this is an AMOLED 2X display, 2880 by 1800. So it's not quite a 4, 4K display. Again, as a content editor, like I, I look for 4K displays personally, but many people out there would be just fine with a, a, a 2880 by 1800 display. Really not a huge deal there. Otherwise it is 120 Hertz. It gets reasonably bright, but it is still AMOLED. So not super bright, but really great HDR, great contrast, really dark blacks on here. So as far as like color and, and watching media on here, you're gonna have a fantastic experience on this display. And having touchscreen on here, I think is a big benefit. Like I said, I've been primarily using a MacBook Pro recently and that doesn't have a touchscreen, but coming back to this uh, with a touchscreen, it's just so much easier when you see like something on screen, maybe you have multiple monitors and you open up something on this screen, rather than like finding your mouse, you just touch it. Like you always know where your hand is. It's so much easier um, in some situations. Similarly, if you're trying to zoom in, if you're on a map or something like that, there are plenty of conveniences with having a touch screen. Now, a quick little test. Um, I'm pretty sure this won't work, but just double checking to see if an S Pen does work on this. I have the S Pen from a Galaxy tablet and it looks like confirming it does not work on here. So if you have an S Pen, don't plan on using that here. I mean, it doesn't fold flat anyway, so it kind of makes sense that you wouldn't have that. But again, just a question that I might see in the comments anyway. All right, so a couple hardware tests I wanna get into before we start talking about the internals of this and the software that it comes with. The first test I wanna get into is actually a camera test. So let's open up the camera. So I'm in my studio right now. Obviously we have pretty ideal lighting right here. I think the camera, like it looks good to me. Uh, this is a 1080p webcam. Surprised with how tiny this webcam is. We'll see how it does in low light, but also let me know what the microphone sound like on this. I have to say, I'm not the biggest fan of the effects. I feel like my face is very softened here. Um, it also like really heavily desaturates my face. So I feel like I look very, very pale here. The wall behind me looks extremely blue in real life. I mean, you know, with the camera, you can see what it actually looks like. Um, definitely not nearly that blue. It is a white wall. Um, so the camera is not perfect, but for a webcam, is this passable? Also, we do have some settings on here that you can use um, on many different things. So auto automatic framing, as we've seen, swill, like if I move over here, it like zooms in and kind of focuses on me. And again, this is the 1080p camera. So like this is gonna be cropped down. It's definitely not 1080p when it zooms in like this. And so then we can also turn on eye contact, which helps you look like you're always looking at, see if it's doing that. Like, I, I don't really, I'm not really sure what this is doing. I think it's because I'm looking down here and it makes it look like I'm looking at the camera. This kind of weirds me out actually. So, whoa. Yeah, I don't, I don't like that. I don't like that. <laughs> but the setting's there in case you want to use it. And then we have background effects as well. You can have a standard blur and it looks like it's detecting hair fairly well. Obviously, this is a pretty easy environment with a white wall behind me. 
Then we have portrait blur as well. So slightly less blurry background. Uh, portrait probably looks a little bit better, um, but again, it is still just like a classic cutout. Let's see if I put something in front of me. Okay, so yeah, I don't know. It does an okay job. For a webcam, I have to say, it's not too bad. All right, now let's get into a speaker test. Now I wanna compare this side by side with a MacBook Pro or, or maybe some other laptops as well, just to see generally how well it performs. So as you can hear in the speaker test, it does get reasonably loud, actually very loud, honestly. Um, it doesn't have the best bass. So, I mean, like it, I don't think it's quite as good as a MacBook Pro, in my opinion, for the speakers, um, but better than many other laptops of this size. So speakers definitely get the job done. Um, but, you know, there is, of course, a headphone jack or Bluetooth to connect to other speakers if you wanted to have a more uh, professional setup for better audio quality. So talking about the internals of this laptop, we have two main configurations. They're both running Intel's ultra processors. One is a seven and one is a nine. The seven is obviously going to be the cheaper one coming with 16 gigs of RAM uh, and the RTX 4050. And that one is going to be the 2399. So $2,399 for that configuration or the 2999, so the $3,000 model, is coming with the nine, it's coming with the RTX, or the NVIDIA RTX 4070, so a slightly better graphics card there, and that is coming with 32 gigabytes of RAM. So that's going to really be the, the loaded model you're probably gonna wanna go with if you are like a creator, for example. Um, personally, I always opt for that one. But now let me show you the, the Geekbench results from this laptop in particular. And by the way, I'll have links to both configurations down below, so if you wanna kinda compare them one to one and see for yourself which one makes the most sense for you, uh, I do have those links down below there, affiliate links, so they do help the channel. They help me to make videos like this one, and it costs absolutely nothing to you. So if you appreciate the video, just consider maybe buying through that link. Now, what comes in the box with this laptop? Not much. You're just getting the brick right here, and of course the cable. The cable is approximately, I'd say about six feet long. So yeah, it's about six feet long and it is a USB type C to C, which is great. So uh, unlike maybe like the MacBook, which has the little MagSafe charger, type C is just, I mean, it works for everything. I'll bring just this cable when I travel to charge up my phone, to charge up my earbuds, to charge up my laptop, obviously, everything with one cable. I'm a huge fan of that. And the charging brick also works to charge up all the other stuff as well. And I believe, so this says super fast charging. I believe it is 140 watts. Uh, I'll show on screen if I'm wrong about that, but I'm fairly certain this is a 140 watt charger or charging block. It's really quite large. So this thing's pretty heavy. Uh, so it's gonna be reasonably heavy to travel with all of this. So you don't have to bring this block. There are other charging bricks that I would say give you maybe like 100 watts and are a lot smaller and still get the job done. So some other internals with this laptop. This has Wi-Fi 6E, not Wi-Fi 7, so not the most future-proof, but I think that's probably fast enough for most people. Just a little strange. I don't know, maybe when they were designing this, they decided not to go with 7 for some reason but it is what it is. This has a 76 watt hour battery. I have to say the battery life on here was performing quite well from my experience. It really drains very slowly, obviously very dependent on what you're doing. If you're editing videos and exporting videos, you're gonna drain it a lot faster. Uh, obviously it heats up the laptop a little bit more, kicks the fans on, uh, but that kind of leads me into my next test, which is going to be a relative volume test of the fans under normal workload, meaning like you're not, you're just browsing the web, you're not doing much under a workload that is a little bit heavier. So maybe like uh, OBS, like screen recording on your laptop. That's a, a situation that I run into a lot that I would really like a laptop to be very quiet in. And of course, exporting a video, really pushing the laptop a little bit harder to see how loud the fans actually get. Scenario number two is the optimized mode, just normal web browsing, and you can see it's almost silent, very little fan sound. Scenario three, I have OBS recording the screen right now. Typically this kicks the fan on for most laptops. Still pretty silent, and we are in optimized mode. Go back to optimized mode. No fan. 
And if we go to quiet mode, And no matter what I do with this laptop, it never like burns me, it never gets too hot where I feel like when it's on my lap, I can't have it there. If I'm exporting a video, like it will get a little bit warmer, but again, never like alarmingly hot. I, I don't really think that's any kind of a drawback here. And now of course, probably the biggest factor of buying this laptop, of course, there are a lot of powerful laptops that have similar specs to this one and possibly even lower prices. But what I would say is the main reason people would be buying this laptop is going to be for the software. This is in Samsung's ecosystem and like thoroughly in Samsung's ecosystem, unlike many other Windows devices, which can technically connect and you can kind of do nearby share and stuff like that. Um, and, and you know, like Microsoft Swift pair and stuff like that. But this actually has some Samsung apps that it comes with, obviously. Samsung does a great job of making their own ecosystem. So for example, Samsung added Quick Search on here. Of course, we also have Quick Share on here and it works so much better than than, than like nearby share on most other Windows devices, which should be moving to QuickShare eventually anyway, I believe. But this, like being in the Samsung ecosystem, as soon as you search on a tablet or anything else, it'll pop up immediately. And speaking of tablets, if you have a Galaxy Tab, you can use it as an extension of your display just by setting it next to there and turning that on in settings. Or you can have universal control, which is also really nice, um, where you're able to just drag your mouse over to the tablet or similarly your Galaxy S24 Ultra or most other Samsung flagship phones, you can drag your mouse over to that as well. And it's really convenient. So if you have a photo on your tablet or on your phone, you can just drag that over to your laptop and it makes it really easy to make like a presentation or, or anything of that nature. Quick search, of course, is a cool feature on here, which allows you to search basically everything on your entire laptop. Um, it really does a good job of making things more findable. In my opinion, we have Samsung smart things on here so you can manage different like devices in your smart home. You can find your Samsung devices, your phone, things like that. And of course, going down here, we have Samsung Pass, Samsung Notes, Samsung Flow, Samsung Gallery. So kind of a continuity of all your photos from your phone and on your laptop and a lot of other things that you might not even use like Samsung Studio, Samsung TV Plus, like the list goes on and on for different things that are included. Now, Samsung Pass is a pretty cool one. So all of your passwords, for example, on your phone will also be you know, synced up with any other Samsung device, really, but your laptop here as well. Just kind of a cool, convenient way to save all your passwords in one. And of course, you can see right there, Screen Recorder is another cool feature, so you don't have to go and download a third-party software like OBS Studio, for example. Now, while the Galaxy Book 4 Ultra is a great laptop, and there's a lot I really like about it, and very few things I even minorly dislike, there is one thing that I hate about this laptop that I think was a huge miss and just really degrades the overall feel of this laptop. So it's a $3,000 laptop, and Samsung clearly spent a lot of effort making it look and feel premium with the nice exterior, the aluminum finish everywhere, like a really nice looking and feeling laptop. The software is smooth with one big exception. And that is that they installed the bloatware on here that is always trying to upsell you. They installed McAfee. And, and I don't know why they would do that. Like, you know, if you look at the Surface laptops, they don't do that. Um, MacBooks obviously don't do that. So when you're spending $3,000 on this laptop and then you're getting little pop-ups on the bottom and you have to go and uninstall this software to stop getting these promotions that are always trying to sell you a subscription, it just feels like, it feels like a cheap laptop to me. That's something that if it's a $700 laptop or a $500 laptop, I get it, go for it. Subsidize the laptop, drive that price down. But on this, it's a premium laptop. Like, don't, don't do that to me. It doesn't feel like, like I just really think it degrades the feel of this laptop. And I know other people agree with me, maybe not everyone. If you don't mind it, totally fine. Just disregard this comment. But for me, I just, I, I don't know. I don't know why Samsung did that. All right, so that is the Galaxy Book 4 Ultra. Honestly, who this laptop is best for is really, it was tricky for me to figure out exactly who I think would benefit most from this. I think if you look at certain categories, uh, specifically like creators or students or things like that, there are always going to be other laptops that are either cheaper or more powerful or have some other advantage over this one. So it really is a balance over something, someone who really likes the Samsung ecosystem, really likes the features on this Samsung laptop and still wants a very powerful laptop. And if that's you, this is gonna be a fantastic buy. Having the ability to have your tablet next to it and have you know a continuous screen or to drag and drop from your phone over to this laptop, things like that are going to be very valuable to people in the Samsung ecosystem. But if you're not in the Samsung ecosystem, say you are a student, there's gonna be other laptops out there that still give you the i9 on here and still give you like 32 gigs of RAM, but maybe at a lower price. There's gonna be other laptops out there for creators as well that can just do a little bit more, can do it quieter, have a longer battery, 
maybe like a MacBook Pro, for example. So for me personally, I am still going to be using my MacBook Pro every day, but I definitely love the features on this. I think this would be a really great laptop for people in the Samsung ecosystem.